Hello people, so today I'm going to be doing a very different video to stuff I normally do. Today I'm going to go into one of my main interests which is like conspiracy theories, uh, theories about life, philosophy, the universe and a little bit to do with like quantum physics and quantum mechanics but very basic stuff. As you can see from the title today's video is all about the simulation theory. In this video I'm going to explain what the simulation theory is. I'm sure quite a lot of people have heard about it but um, if you don't have you've never heard about it I'm going to try and explain it in this video because I'm so interested in it and I it's like one of my main interests is simulation theory. Bear with me in this video because this is the first time I've literally like ever actually gone off a script. This is all the stuff that I've written. I've got three pages falling out and then this page and blah blah blah. Just to jump straight into it, this is this is a theory of what sort of questions like everything we know is reality and all the possibilities what reality could be. Um, and it like requires kind of an open mind. Like I know a lot I think it's a lot of older people mainly who don't really understand this theory. So I'm gonna try my best to explain it. The simulation theory is the theory that me filming this right now, you watching this right now, is all a computer simulation. It's the hypothesis that everything you know, like your mum, your dog, your nan, you, your house, the world, the universe, the sun, the moon, is all just a computer simulation and is all just computer code, so computer bits. I'm not religious, but if you're watching this and you are, um, obviously you don't have to accept it, it's just an interesting hypothesis, that's why it's called a hypothesis, so <clears throat> I'm taking religion out of this topic really, because otherwise I think it would offend people. I'm going to start off by saying, like, what is a simulation, like, what does the simulation theory actually mean? Everyone knows the game The Sims or, like, Grand Theft Auto or anything like that so basically it's a, The Sims is a game where you create your own character in its own virtual world this whole other world that's been created in a computer the Sim characters they believe that they have a consciousness they believe that they have their own free, their own free will they have their own world so the simulation theory is essentially the hypothesis that what we are living in right now is basically the same as The Sims, that we are in a simulation. Right now you're obviously saying, but I know I'm real, like, I can touch and feel myself, like I am conscious, but in this theory, it's a theory that you are a simulation and that what you think and feel is real, but not necessarily what actually is base reality. The first sort of like time it came about was over a decade ago. In 2003 there was a professor called Nick Bostrom I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, he was a Swedish professor and he basically wrote an article saying are you living in a simulation and this is now called like the simulation argument. The simulation argument is essentially the hypothesis that future humans got to a technical maturity point and they actually started creating simulations because if you think about it computers are in 50 years I think it's a hundred or a thousand times faster than they were are already now so that's like such a difference between like 50 years ago the main factors of the simulation argument are there's three factors so number one humans are likely to go extinct before they reach technical maturity Number two, future humans are extremely unlikely to, to run simulations of ancestors or they'll just lose interest and they'll be so technologically advanced that they won't see the need to. Three is it's almost certain that future technologically advanced humans are going to create a simulation and that we are actually in that simulation what they've already created. The first two are extremely unlikely and unlikely. So looking at like the probability, like from like what you did in maths, look at the probability scale. The first two are very unlikely. So the most likely outcome is that we are actually living in a simulation. It's very complicated um, and it's hard to explain. Like, cause I know it all in my head and I've got it all written down, but it's hard to like explain to someone as if you like, they've never heard it before, um, but it, it's a very complicated 
hypothesis. So from what Nick Bostrom said, he first started the simulation argument, but now it's sort of evolved onto the simulation hypothesis or theory. So this kind of includes loads of different things and I've written down a list of all the kind of possibilities it could be. To start from Bostrom's argument, future humans could have really really fast and smart computers and they could run their own simulation of their ancestors. This is like a really mind-blowing thing but our future ancestors have created a simulation of past humans and then those past humans get to that stage what the future humans were and then they create a simulation and then they create a simulation and then they create a simulation it's just ongoing and ongoing and ongoing and there's just a multiverse of simulations this is where it leads me on to as i said multiverse i feel like i feel like simulation theory could explain multiverse theory because a multiverse is basically the idea that there are multiple universes like a bubble maybe the multiverses are just different simulations or parallel universes for example where one thing is slightly different say we're in a simulation now the parallel universe to us could be exactly the same but a sim simulation with a like little tweak what's different another thing what i've heard a lot of people say and what i also think so obviously the thought of god is like a higher power and he's created everything maybe the thought of god is actually just the simulation creator the person who actually created simulations or if you're getting into like ancient alien theorists god could actually just be an alien who actually just started our simulation so we look at them as a higher power who created this reality because in religion obviously you would say well simulation isn't real because god made it so maybe the simulation creator is god but then god is just the person who started the simulation don't know if you're following i don't even know if i'm following but i'm trying to explain it to the best of my ability a lot of people think well if simulation theory is true why would the programmers make the sims not know that this is reality so you're probably thinking like well like what the fuck are you like smoking <laughs> but um there's actually so much scientific evidence for this and there's so many like astrophysicists, physicists, philosophers and scientists who all believe in this so like Elon Musk, Nick Bostrom, Neil deGrasse Tyson, James Gates and basically loads of other people but they're just a few what I'm actually going to talk about later. Depending on who you ask out of a lot of these people it's they usually say 20 to 50 percent that it's real and that this actually isn't base reality. You look at our computing power today and you say, I have the power to program a world inside of a computer. Well, imagine in the future where you have even more power than that. And you can create characters that have, for example, free will or their own perception of free will. So this is a world and I program in the laws that govern that world. That world will have its own laws of physics and chemistry and biology. Now you're a character in that world and you think you have free will and you say, I want to invent a computer. So you do. Hey, I want to create a world in my computer. And then that world creates a world in its computer. And then you have simulations all the way down. So now you lay out all these universes and throw a dart. Which of these universes are you most likely to hit? The original one that started it? Or the countless simulations, the daughter simulations that uh, unfolded thereafter? You're gonna hit a sim you're gonna hit one of the simulations. I just mentioned Elon Musk. I'm sure most people know who Elon Musk is. He's the creator of Tesla, the cars who drive themselves. Um, he is the founder of SpaceX. Their like purpose is basically travel space easily and they're trying to colonize Mars. He's a massive believer in simulation theory. One of his quotes is actually, I'll read it. He states, if you assume any rate of improvement in simulation and computers, even if improvement drops by a thousand, simulations will be indistinguishable from reality and the odds that we are in base reality and not in a simulation is one in billions. He's basically saying, if you think that computers are gonna get any better at all, we won't be able to see the difference between reality and just a simulation and the chance that this is real 
and it's not a simulation is one in billions i don't know how many fucking years ago like in the 1980s they had pong so it was just like two sliding things and a ball going like that and that was like a simulation and now we have virtual reality headsets you can see and you really feel like you're in the moment and in the game and if you think that it's going to improve at any rate at all simulation theory is technically um, what's the word Let's imagine it's a 10,000 years in the future, uh, which is nothing in the evolutionary scale. Um, so, um, so, so given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever, and there would probably be, you know, billions of such, uh, you know, computers or set-top boxes, it would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. So the assumption then is that somebody beat us to it, and this is a game. No, no, there's a one in billions chance that this is base reality. And actually, I mean, arguably we should hope that that's true, because otherwise, if, if civilization stops advancing, then that may be due to some calamitous event that erases civilization. So maybe we should be hopeful that this is a simulation, because Otherwise... Because they could reboot it. Well, otherwise, e either we're going to create simulations that are indistinguish indistinguishable from reality or civilization will cease to exist. And the other thing why I really like th simulation theory is because you can't disprove it. Anything you give an, exam like an argument to will be like, well, that's because it's a simulation. You could say, I know I'm not in a simulation because I have a job and I have to do my job and Elon Musk does his job, so if he believes in simulation theory, why would he continue to run SpaceX? Well, it's because it's in a simulation, there's nothing you can do about it. The way I worked out how to understand the difference between a reality what you know and a reality what you may not know. It's the idea that there's like three slaves chained up to a wall in this cave and all they can see is darkness and they can't see a peripheral, like they can't see beside each other, they can't feel and they can't touch because they're chained up. All they can see is in front of them. In front of them is just the cave wall but behind them is a fire in, and in front of that fire there's a bridge and people walk across the bridge casting a shadow onto the wall so those people in the cave all they know is reality is those shadows and they think that's the most real you can get but the people walking along the bridge they know that there's a bigger reality and it reality isn't just a shadow so how do you know and how can you prove that our reality isn't just a shadow of what there actually is if you want to kind of understand reality and when i'm saying simulation theory says reality isn't real plato's cave is something that will really help me understand when i go into plato's theory plato's cave theory and that all we possibly could see of reality is a shadow that argues do we actually have free will and do we actually have consciousness or is our free will and consciousness just a simulation and is there actually so much more to free will and consciousness that we can even like comprehend? No one can actually measure consciousness, no one really understands what consciousness is so how can you say that the consciousness you experience is actually the real one? Another example I really like is called Schrodinger's cat. This also like questions what is reality. It's a theory where like for example you put a cat in a box and like let's go with poison. So you put a cat in a box and then you put poison in the box and then you shut the lid and you can't hear it and it's like a you can't see through the box and you can't hear what's going on inside the box. In our reality that cat is both dead and alive because we can't see what's going on inside the box so we can't measure the reality of what's going inside the box. From our perspective the cat is both alive and dead but to the cat's perspective it's either eaten the poison and is dead or hasn't eaten the poison and, and is alive so 
to the cat there's only one outcome but to us there's two outcomes so, like this is like a sum of two states the only way we can force nature to collapse and be reality is observing it there's like a saying saying nothing in the universe is certain until we measure it but you never know what you're measuring is a simulation or not we can't know the outcome of that cat until we force nature to collapse and we measure the reality so who is forcing nature to collapse for us and who is observing us and then surely we must be if you're actually questioning reality we are the cat in the box to a simulation programmer and it's also the theory that nothing can happen unless it's being observed because like say there's an explosion in the woods somewhere and no one was there to hear it did that explosion actually happen if there was no one there to observe it so is this reality actually real if there's no one there to observe it but a person who could observe it could be a programmer of a simulation we humans are unable to experience the true nature of the universe unfiltered. Our senses and brains can only process a fraction of the world. So we have to use concepts and tools to learn about the true nature of reality. Technological progress not only widened our knowledge about the universe, it also made us aware of unsettling possibilities. In the future, it might become possible to simulate entire universes. But if this is an option, how can we know that it's not already happened? What if we are not creators, but creations? Is it possible that we are not real and we don't even know it? If our current understanding of physics is correct, then it's impossible to simulate the whole universe with its trillions and trillions of things. But we don't actually need to anyway. We only need enough universe to fool the inhabitants of our simulation into thinking that they're real. What about small things like cells or bacteria? We don't really need them. When you use a microscope, what you see could be instantly created. Same with atoms. The chair you're sitting on right now does not need to be simulated with quadrillions of atoms. We just need the outermost layer of it. It might be empty inside until you decide to break it open. Your body might feel like it's filled with bubbly things, but it might be empty until you open it. Oh my god, this is getting so in-depth now. I don't know if anyone's going to I'm going to understand what I'm trying to say. You may be sitting there thinking, well, like, I know I'm real. Like, I know there's atoms. I know atoms make up things. I, like, can touch my arms. I know that I'm real. This is really hard to explain, and I don't even know if I completely understand it. I probably don't. It's basically the... There are building blocks to everything, what is everything, so everything in the universe and what creates the universe. And so there's part tiny particles and they're either, they either create forces or they either create mass and this is called the standard model. The reason why I'm talking about supersymmetry, it answers a lot of questions to like dark matter, Higgs mass and like what builds up the universe really. A man called James Gates actually looked at this and he came to a conclusion of two equations. In these two equations what are the building blocks of the universe he actually found computer bits so like computer code he literally found computer code in the fabric of the cosmos and like the fabric of, of what makes everything so i'm like how can you say the simulation theory isn't real when there is literally computer code within nature and within the universe and within me and you and don't you find it weird like golden ratio and like we're like sunflower seeds that the same as fingerprints and we're like fingerprints and eyes at the same as galaxies don't you think that's weird and like it's all kind of oh what's it called it's like nature's fuck i learned about it in science i can't remember what it's called but it's where like nature always perfectly all perfectly fits together and all works perfectly together and I just don't understand how people can say simulation theory isn't a possibility when there is literally computer code in the universe and in everything the more you dig deep into these equations what build up the building blocks of the galaxies 
in the universe the more you find computer code. This computer code is literally the same computer code as Google browser and what you like use to browse the internet. At the end of the day I think it's a really like interesting and mad like philosophical argument to what actually is this and like is this real and like what is life basically and why are we here I definitely kind of do believe that this is a simulation I just think first of all there's fucking computer code in the universe um, and you can't disprove it and if you even consider any rate of improvement on computers or like games then it's like almost 100%. I'm gonna link loads of links down below to videos like I've watched in the past and videos I've watched while researching this and stuff and I'm also gonna link Kendall Ray and her husband Josh Lador's podcast because they did a whole podcast on simulation theory. This was my first video like this. I'm gonna see how it turns out when I edit but if you are interested in stuff like this let me know what other topics I should talk about. Either message me or comment down below. And as you can tell, I can't talk for very long in videos because I can just completely lose my voice like, and I don't know why. Anyway, if you liked this video, let me know if you liked it or let me know if you didn't and tell me what I could do better. I hope you enjoyed. Cheers for watching. Bye.